Mm-hmm, decisions, decisions. Yeah, look at that. That is pretty. That's all she wrote. Okay, so there is actually a spread of everything. Well, we did a little bass fishing yesterday and uh, had a pretty decent trip. Went out to uh, Lake Imonia here in Tallahassee, which has uh, been on the channel actually quite a bunch. If you, if you look way back in my videos, you can find some fishing footage from this lake. It's 6,000 acres of lily pads and uh, was catching them on my trusty frog there. Still have some of those tree frogs left. So that's my custom mold. But uh, yeah, had a, had a fun day. Had a lot of fun bites on top water. You don't always catch all the bites, but I caught enough to make it worth my while. I'm curious, y'all, real quick before we start the video, does anybody else have a big Fortrex motor? I'm having trouble with it. it when, whenever I deploy it down, it, it doesn't want to lock all the way in. I have to like force it to lock in and then it's hard to get it uh, back up. So I'm curious if anyone might know uh, from experience why their Fortrex would not want to seat all the way down uh, in the down position. So <clears throat> yeah, anyway, we are, uh, yeah, you'll notice this rod doesn't have a reel. That's one of my custom builds. The reel handle assembly came apart while I was fishing yesterday. So I got to go find some screws and put that back together. No big deal, but in any event, we're going to uh, head back into the fish cave and start the video. I've got to get the boat cover on real quick before it starts raining. It's, it's a little cloudy today and it's starting to mist and uh, I don't want the boat to be soaked before it goes under the cover. Okay, welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Chris Jones. Thank you so much for watching the world's worst fishing today. And we have another crazy remelt extravaganza video. Um, so many people have requested, hey man, do another remelt, do another big brand remelt. And I was like, okay, I will do it. And I've got the stuff. So today we're doing another Guggenbaits remelt video, but it's not gonna be like the last one. This box of Guggenbaits was actually sent to me by Fish Media which is sort of one of the companies under the Guggen brand. Well, the Guggen brand, I think, is under Fish Media. Either way, Guggen actually sent me these baits for this video. Um, so thank you to Matt at Fish Media for um, reaching out to me, sending me this stuff. Uh, hopefully we can do some more sort of collaborations like that. Um, but in any event, I have a ton of Guggen baits, okay? And <clears throat> we're gonna remelt them down and see if we can make some good stuff with them. Hmm, 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 decisions, decisions. Which ones get smoked first? I think before that though, we'll at least take a look at what we have. We have these Alabama Craw Trench Hogs. Looks like there's three bags of those. And uh, that's a really cool bait. It's, it's, it's gonna be a bit of a shame to chop that up, but I got something planned for that. Uh, we have the same bait here in Blue Baby. I've had a lot of requests to do a color match on Blue Baby. So if y'all still want to see this, this is not this is not a difficult color match at all. So uh, if anyone in the audience wants to learn this color, I'll be happy to teach it. Um, now here's a bait I have not in person had yet. Uh, this is Lake Fork Guy's Mondo Worm. I believe this is, this is Rackley's, uh, this is the one that he puts his name to. So watermelon red, okay. Three bags of that, and uh, this is this is such a cool looking worm. Yeah, here's the Slim Shake in Summer Crawl. So sort of like a bit of a chartreuse pepper, green pumpkin laminate. Um, real nice natural color there. Again, not a difficult color if you're a bait maker at home. Um, these two right here are the colors that stand out to me as a bait maker as being fun, exciting, and somewhat challenging. Um, they're still basic laminates, but they're really great natural colors and to match it perfectly, you know, is always a challenge. Even a simple color, you know, I can take one look at that and know immediately how I would make it, right? But to match it perfectly is always a challenge because you're not always using the same exact pigments and uh, you don't know their recipes. Um, and then, okay, blue fleck, 
So that's actually sort of like a reddish pigment. So this is like a real dark red bug color with blue in it. And we have a couple bags of those, three bags of those in the Mondo Worm. So I think we're actually going to start with that one first. We're going to take Justin Rackley's Blue Fleck 10 inch Mondo Worms and turn them into some even more Mondo Worms. Well, not the Mondo Worm, but another big worm. Okay, everybody. So this is a 10 inch worm. Okay, they call it the Mondo Worm. We're going to make some mondo -er worms in it, okay? This worm is humongous. It has been on the channel, I think, maybe once, maybe twice. Um, this is a 13-inch monstrosity worm. And then we also have a similar-sized wedge worm over here. So we're just going to kind of get a couple different looks with it. Let's see. So let's open this up. Just got to sniff it. Yeah, man, I love their scent. It's that kind of shrimp or craw oil mixed with the uh, licorice stuff, the anise, as it's called. Absolutely awesome. Then that might not be what they're using. That's just what it reminds me of. If I was going to mix a scent similar to the Guggen scent, it would be anise oil mixed with perhaps shrimp oil or something like that. Yeah, really, really dark red. Y'all can see that there. So in any event, let's uh, pour them back out because we got to cut them up. Whew, oily, oily, oily. Okay, here's the part that everybody likes to watch. Snip, snip, snip. Snip, snip, snip. Snip, snip. Got to... Cut them up into, into small pieces, guys. That way they remelt properly and you don't have just these big chunks in your plastic. Why do I have yellow colorant? Oh, well, I'm a bait maker. I'm always going to be stained with some sort of glitter or colors. I'm pretty convinced. So now we're just going to get this uh, next bag out here. Maybe. All right, you know what? I wonder if I could just do it this way and then take them out. Yeah, look at that. Well, that was a lot easier. Oh yeah, so much easier. Might need a bigger cup. Nah, I think we got it. And again, everyone, production plastic is no dead on plastic. So it's not really meant for microwave abuse, you know, the. The plastic that production companies use are for uh, production machines that just run heat exchangers. This plastic will not hold up to our processes as a small bait maker the way that dead-on plastics would or other plastics made for the home bait maker. So I'm giving it just a little bit of heat stabilizer. That way this doesn't just burn up and then I will have wasted those bags of Guggen baits. Okay, yikes, bubble trouble. And uh, that's too many bubbles to put in the vacuum chamber. I'd have to transfer that to a bigger cup. It's just gonna overflow immediately. So give me a few minutes. I've gotta figure out a way to get this air out. And uh, I, think it's, I think it's actually a really pretty color. And I wanna use it correctly. So let me get these bubbles out. We're gonna be using that new vacuum chamber. If you haven't seen the video, go check it out. And uh, we'll meet you right back. All right, y'all, let's do it. We have transferred to a new cup, and the majority of the bubbles are gone. And I think it, it I think it's in plenty good shape to run some baits. So here we go. Oops. Let's see what we can get. These big worms obviously take a lot of plastic, but they're only single cavity molds. So I, I should have enough to do both of these big worms here and then this four cavity mold uh, right here. So wish me luck, should have enough. Barely. <laughs> but I figured, hey, Mondo worm, let's make some more worms with it. Sometimes I like to take like a craw bait and make something completely different than a craw, which is fun. We'll definitely do some of that. 
But for the first round, we're just kind of keeping it straightforward. And you can see this is sort of like a black orange. I, I thought it was sort of red. <clears throat> um, but that, that has a lot of orange in it. So if, if I wanted to make that, I would just mix black with orange and sort of get this coppery burnt orange effect. All right, little drum roll action there. Oh dear Lord. <laughs> that is a machine. Just take a look at the size of that. <laughs> there it is. You wanna talk about big worms? That's it. Gorgeous. I really like this color too. That dark kind of burnt orange. See, it, it, it can kind of look red bug and orange at the same time. So let's get the other worm out and then we'll look at the uh, four cavity mold. Okay, so there are the two 13 inch mega worms. And this is actually a nine inch ledge worm right here in a four cavity mold. So let's take these out. Yeah, look at that. Very similar in overall size and profile to the original Mondo worm that these came from. So, <laughs> there's what we have right there. Pretty color. Awesome, awesome. Some good quality worms from some good quality worms. Okay, everybody. Here's what we have so far. Looking beautiful. I might try to run a few more of the 13 inchers since they are single cavity and uh, try to get a few more out of that. But I think for the most part, we are done with this color and we're gonna move on to the next color in the next bait, whatever that's going to be. Okay, next up, let's take a look at these trench hogs and these look really awesome. So instead of just cutting them in half right away, I do wanna get, wow, yeah, that's gorgeous. Do wanna get one of these out. <clears throat> So that we can take a look yeah nice green pumpkin top and this is so this is a lot like that natural color that is looks to be like just blue highlight with maybe some black flake in it so if we look at the laminate there yeah it's 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 actually kind of see-through so I think that's just blue highlight powder, no actual pigment in it, laminated with green pumpkin. So I'm looking forward to seeing these. And I'm not sure what we're gonna make with them yet. What should we make? What should we make? I know y'all can't answer right now in real time, but just think to yourselves, what would look good in this? Hmm, I'm not sure. I might not know until I see it melted down. I think we'll look at it melted down and then we'll make a decision on what we're gonna do here. Because I don't want to ruin it. Don't wanna make something that just looks terrible. Come on. One more. All right, meet you back when this is ready. Okay, so after being in the vac pot, here's what it looks like. That is pretty. So, I got to thinking about it. What would look great in that color? A tube! Alrighty. Feeling good. Yeah, these are gonna look great as tubes. It kinda has a blue craw sort of effect about the color so yeah really cool all right let's see what the body of these tubes looks like there we go yeah look at that you can see the blue highlight effect so that's what our tubes are going to be let's get one out I love how they look like lollipops on a stick. <laughs> okay, so once we have our tail cut, that will be our tube right there. Looking good, looking good. All right, and now for round number two on the tubes. 
I think we'll get I think we'll get about two runs here successfully. We won't have enough plastic left to do another five tubes, but that's okay. We'll take ten. And I'll meet you back when these are done. All right, now we're just going to kind of show you one tail being cut real fast. So I'm just going to lay out one of the tubes. And here we go. We have this crazy razor blade tail cutter. That's all she wrote. Just like that, folks. Just like that. We have a finished tube. Check it out. Yeah. Beautiful. I'll meet you back when they are all finished. All right, trench hogs to tubes. What do y'all think? Pretty neat. Awesome. That's such a great tube mold. That is the Angling AI 4 inch tube. And uh, yeah, pretty sweet. Bet y'all didn't see that one coming. Creature baits into tubes. Man, you gotta love home bait making. Okay, next on the chopping block is the Watermelon Red Mondo Worms. And we have three bags of those. So we're gonna do like before, and we're, or we're gonna start this time with a bigger cup. That way we can get this stuff prepared out right. Yeah. Let's go. Watermelon Red. Simple and straightforward. Awesome color. Okay, here is our watermelon red. And because we had just talked about the fact that I used to throw the zoom fluke in this bait, we're gonna make a similar style bait, a jerk bait. So, here we go. know if this injector can get all three of these molds. Nope, we're not. Dang it, dang it, dang it. <clears throat> I'm having problems with my bigger size injector, <clears throat> so I'm limited to these eight ounces, which isn't going to get all three of those. That's okay. We'll just make them two at a time, and we'll meet you right back. All right, let's take a look at these jerk baits here. Should look pretty fresh. No big surprise here, but uh, yeah, looking good. Check that out. Yeah, let's get this other mold open real fast. Okay, we'll get them together here, and boom. Tell you what, it's a dark watermelon color. Dark watermelon red. Had a bit of a bubble there. Yeah, there it is. We're gonna make a few more of those. And then we will move on. All right, look at that. Looking good. Handful of jerk baits now. So we will add those to the pile. Looking good, looking good. That's the Angling AI five inch jerk bait mold. Okay, so this is the Summer Craw Slim Shake. And it's basically just a green pumpkin or a watermelon seed laminated with a basically a chartreuse green, it's not straight chartreuse, bottom. Really, really attractive worm. So I think I'll probably make this color. But uh, we're going to go ahead and chop them up and we'll meet you back. Yeah, that is a super attractive color. We're gonna hit it with some heat stabilizer and go ahead and melt it down. And while the plastic is in the microwave, or uh, excuse me, in the vacuum pot, I was gonna show you just a few fun hand pours that I've done recently. This is sort of like a crawfish, sort of coral snake almost pattern. Just kind of testing out some some ideas and and just sort of practicing my hand pouring abilities. So kind of fun there. And these I'm really proud of. These are little peacock bass. You can see sort of the predator eye dot there on the tails. And uh, obviously these don't have eyeballs on right now. But, you know, every little yellow dot that you see is individually poured, as are the stripes, the skin layer, 
the the uh, eye, eyeball dots, predator dots on the back. Yeah, really, really proud of those. Super fun. This was part of a bait, uh, sort of like a color match challenge, and uh, really enjoyed um, the challenge of trying to pour a little peacock bass. Okay, so just like I figured, that color basically just melted down into just a lighter shade of green, or, or excuse me, like a brighter shade of green because it had that chartreuse in it. But we're gonna make some creature baits out of it. Okay, there are the grass grenades, and now we are moving on to the final thing is the Alabama Craw trench hogs, and I think these are gonna be super cool. Okay, check these out. Super cool. Green pumpkin top, laminated over in orange. And uh, I think this will look pretty cool once it's melted together. And you guessed it, we're going to make stick worms out of these. So they're going to go from creature bait, trench hogs, to stick worms. And I think they're going to be pretty awesome. So let's get to work. All right, what an awesome looking crawfish color. So we're gonna melt these down and run some baits. It's a little better angle right here. I don't know if we'll get all three. Ugh, yeah, probably not. Sorry guys, I'm normally more prepared, but I'm a little limited on my single injectors right now. And I didn't want to take apart my double injector. I kind of like to leave things as they are. So we will make do with what we have. All right. Those are going to be some really good looking sticks though. All right. There's that round right there. Yeah. Take a look. Pretty cool. It's, uh, so, it's amazing how different things can look in the cup. See that? That looks a little more orange. You no, know, and then you, you get it in a thicker bait like this that doesn't have, like, a thin appendage. And you won't really see as much of that orange. So that, to me, just from a distance, that looks like a, a green pumpkin. With a little bit of orange in it. But, um, yeah, looks really good either way. I mean, you want to talk about a natural fish catching color. That's it. Okay, so there's actually a spread of everything. I took the remainder of this plastic and did a few hand pour worms. That's one of the benefits of an open worm or an open pour style. You don't need enough plastic to fill the whole mold, right? I don't need to fill a runner and there's no worry about filling every cavity. You can just pour it one at a time till you're completely out of plastic. And that's a good way to use the, you know, whenever you have a little bit left in the cup you might not be able to fill that entire mold but doing this open pour stuff you can you can at least fill a few more cavities right so we will get these out for you and boom that's everything so I am giving away all of these baits today's Guggen baits meltdown <clears throat> are up for grabs so uh, same rules apply for this giveaway as all of my giveaways I'm going to need you all to obviously watch the video, like the video, but furthermore, you need to leave a comment down below that says shared, and this is the honor system. I want you to share this video to your social media. Let's get a ton of views. You know, I, I just, I, I, I love the comments. I love interacting with my audience. So in order to give away, to, to enter the giveaway, share the video, leave a comment down below that says shared, and, um, uh, couple days from now we will do a uh, winner announcement video and I will send these your way now last video I did a big giveaway for 50,000 subs or, or my last giveaway video I did a big giveaway for 50,000 subs and I had people creating fake accounts emailing me claiming to be the winner so whenever uh, I do select a winner you're gonna need to be able to verify so just be on the lookout don't scam me, I will catch you. With that said, we're gonna sign this one off. Okay guys, well that was a ton of fun remelding. Um, let me know below also, don't forget, to, don't forget to share the video and write shared to enter the contest. But also I'm curious which ones were your favorites? 
I think the very first one was my favorite. I like the way this worm looks. I really like this color in a worm. So I'm going to duplicate this in, in my own time. I'm gonna make this color. And uh, wow, I mean, just this 13, I mean, it's like a snake. It's like a burnt orange and blue snake. So that's probably my favorite out of today. Now, uh, you know, all of these colors that I did today were just straight remelt. I didn't add plastic to it. I didn't alter the color with my own colors and glitters. Just a straight Guggenbates remelt. Wanted you guys to see what these colors look like. You know, and, and these, these remelt videos are, you know, largely entertainment and novelty, but a lot of people start the bait making hobby by remelting their leftovers in the bottom of their boat or grabbing some old baits that they're not really going to use and doing what I did, chopping them up right out of the bag and remelting them down. And then they discover, wow, this bait making is really fun. So that's sort of the inspiration. Um, thanks again to Guggen for sending these to me. Feel free guys to send me as many Guggen baits as you want. And, uh, I'll make good use of them one way or another. So with that said, we're out of here. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.